Welcome, I'm John Caldera, your devil's advocate. You see, they got a little, oh, right here, see, devil's advocate. Oh, come on, get out of the house, take your wife out for dinner, or sit around and watch me. So what's going on in the State House? We've only got about a month left to find out. So right here from the Denver Post, our one and only Tim Hoover, poor bastard who has to go down there every day. Hey, John, emphasis on poor, poor right? Yeah, <laughs> we'll talk about that later. Joe Handel from the Durango Herald, that's a long drive. It is. It takes me, uh, I had to get up uh, last night yeah, to get here. Every, yeah. every day. It's like yep. Santa Claus. I know. It's time travel. All right. So earlier this week, big news, Republicans, Democrats held hands, sang kumbaya, and passed a, a budget. You know, I'm always amazed that the most important things in government get the least amount of coverage, you know, whether it's redistricting or budget bills, because they're boring. They are so, th they're, the they're word terrible. budget. Just Butch. yeah, you try to leave it out of the headline yeah. because you you try to trick readers into uh, you, they're halfway through and they say, oh, geez, there's a story about the budget. Damn it, damn it. There's yeah. no there's no there's no yeah. sex appeal in that. Well, well, we, what, what was the news? Any why why so much agreement? Well, a lot of it was because uh, of a fight that never happened. So um, earlier, uh, well, rather last month, there was some some nice shiny happy news. Uh, from a state budget forecast that showed that we things had improved enough that they could fund a huge uh, property tax break for seniors cost the state about a hundred million bucks a year and, and they haven't done that in the last couple of years they haven't done it in the, the entire existence of the thing from 2000 they've only done it like three four times because um, there's almost never enough money to fund this but it was something that Republicans were bashing uh, Democrats over despite having voted to do the same thing when they were in power uh, in the early 2000s and get rid of it but there's enough money to fund it so uh, you know the big fight just never really happened and so when it came down to actually uh, you know agreeing on the budget it was a lot a lot of smaller so, fights. So, so the big fight was over the the, the, the property tax exemption mm -hmm. uh, for, for what older it folks. Was, yeah, what, what it was was last, last summer already the Republicans were saying we're going to restore this tax break and the Democrats looked at that and said the only way there's money to do that is if you if, if you take money out of school. So old folks versus little kids, that's a fight we're willing to have. So everybody was on this right. collision course and then all of a sudden there was enough money for the old folks and the little kids. That is disappointing, isn't oh, it? Oh, I know. It was going to be a All great the years fight. to have an economic recovery. It just why did it have to be this Why moment? did it have to be? <laughs> but what we have, and tell me if I'm wrong on this. I, I imagine when you're down there, everybody, you've got 100 people, most of them are looking at re-election this, this coming fall, and you know, racing to take care of the little kids and racing to take care of the seniors, man, that is, that is prime meat. Am I wrong on this? Not at all. No, it's uh, this is there's been a lot that's gone on this session that has been about positioning for the fall campaign. There, lots of times I'll see a vote, I'll see a bill. You know, one side will run it, expecting it to die on, in the other chamber, basically because it's going to look really bad on those postcards you get yeah. in your mailbox in September, October. You know, Joe Blow voted against kids. Joe well, Blow hates man. seniors. Why does he hate seniors? Call him and ask him why he's such a jerk to seniors. Excuse me, why are you yeah. such a jerk? So, so what would have happened if the money wasn't there, if we didn't have about a 10% bump in, in, in that taxes? That is a really good question. What, what do you think and would have And there happened? were no good answers for it. I suspect there, there, there would have had to have been um, uh, deeper cuts to education. I don't know what the plan was. Um, there were all kind. Of, there was all kinds of hands wringing over. You know, can we cut Medicaid? And the answer seemed to always be, well, no, you can't. But yes, yes, you can. You no, know, you, you really can't. You what, just need to tell Washington, we don't want their money, and then you can do well, all sorts of things. Well, um, the, but we don't. We don't have the cojones in the state to do that anymore. We the, used to, but not anymore. There's federal law that kind of prevents you from doing that. You can't just say, um, no, we won't. Um, and especially while. Uh, PPACA, better known as Obamacare, is um, still in the courts. Um, there's really, your hands are kind of tied. Um, They're not. I'm <laughs> telling you, other states are looking at it. It, it can be done. We've block granted uh, welfare. The same sort of things are going to have to happen sooner or later. With you're, you're talking about Washington? I'm talking about Washington. Yeah, that's going to happen. But also, but really also here, they've said that but the, Colorado really has done not, not a lot to say, no, we, we want to control our own Medicare. 
Medicaid. Actually, Medicaid. actually yeah. Colorado has done a, a, a decent lot. amount. Um, Such as? They're, they're smaller um, kind of experimental programs, but they they figured that there's a you can save money by instead of institutionalizing people or sending them off to um, inpatient facilities, just get them some treatment at home, a little bit of assisted living at home. That actually saves some money, and they've been pretty successful in that. Well, it's had some pretty good luck when it comes to prisons in this term. I mean, uh, the governor says he's going he's gonna to shut down some prisons and let, let them all out and, and go crazy. And, to rape and not, ex not that's, exactly. That's what he said. Yeah. I, I'll have I heard to him. look heard for him. that press release, but um, what they talked about doing and what they've they've done now is they're going to shut down uh, Colorado State Penitentiary Two. Is that also Colorado State University? Because when I, I've seen some kids up there, there's some overlap yeah. there. I don't want to get into it too much, but uh, it's in Canyon City, and this is a prison. It's, it's one of those Pelican Bay style places where they, you're basically locked down for 23 hours a day. And th the idea is it was supposed to be for the worst of the worst, prison agitators, the ultra violent offenders. Problem, now we just have public school for that. Problem was, <laughs> is they were putting a whole lot of people who didn't meet those categories necessarily in there, mentally ill folks, yeah. problems, people who just, they just couldn't figure out where to classify them. And there was a lot of criticism of it um, and they hadn't really filled it anyway. It was only a th about a third of the prison that was even open. It's actually pretty exciting that at the Independence Institute, we've been doing a lot on sentencing reform, and that there seems to be a broad-scale agreement on that we're, we're over-incarcerating, that there are people out there who need drug treatment mm -hmm. instead of being punished. There are other ways to punish people with, with ankle bracelets and uh, supervised parole and all sorts of other things that cost a lot less than the $30,000 a year. We do, and we're seeing that prosecutors and sheriffs and police um, all seem to be agreeing on a, a lot of the same stuff. Is that is that finally translating into some savings? It is. There's a well, there there's a, a bill right now that would cut um, simple drug possession from a felony down to a misdemeanor, and a lot of very conservative Republicans are in favor of that. Um, the county sheriffs and the the district attorneys, they're not on board with that yet. But um, so far, they've been overruled. It really is a new situation, at least at the legislature, where both the left and the right are saying, w we have lost there's the war a, on drugs, and it's time to things, try something different. There's some beautiful things when recession hits, and that when you can't raise any more in taxes, and the people won't stomach any more in taxes, you actually have to start looking at, at savings. Mm -hmm. and, and after a while, you start saying, wait a second, we can do this better. We can do that better. Here's a program we don't need need to do, um, and that's that's the plus side of economic right. bad times. That's true. Um, uh, you know, one of the things to me that's really interesting is the with the homestead exemption. Um, when the state was, I don't want to say flush with money, but certainly when it had more a lot more money, um, the Democrats never really scrutinized it. They were right. all too happy to g give this to old people mm -hmm. too. Problem is, is that this is a this is a benefit that goes to folks regardless of income um, and on top of that is is it doesn't go to people who've lived in Colorado for say 50 years but you moved out of your house a couple years ago because you're trying to downsize you can't afford a big house anymore but you could really use that tax break well some guy that's moved into a ski chalet in Aspen and has only lived here for 10 years he gets it you don't well, the same sort of thing with the old age retirement fund. This is, pardon me while I wonk out for a second. We're the last state in the union the to have pension. the old age p pension, which is a pension mm -hmm. that was made before Social Security. Every other state has gotten rid of their own little Social Security. Well, and, and, and we're the last ones to have it. And you could move in to Colorado, spend all your time when you were productive and, and paying taxes in Kansas, hop over the fence and get this benefit without having to pay, have paid in to begin with. Well, what was even more uh, egregious was up until very recently, you could have lived in China your entire life. And if your kids had gotten established here, they could bring mom and pop over from China and pretty much immediately sign them up um, for uh, 700 bucks a month each. Uh, and uh, there was a huge loophole in the program that allowed people who had promised the federal government when they sponsored their family members as immigrants to take care of them 
and the, but the second they got to the state, they put them on this program, and uh, it was costing the state um, tens and tens of millions of dollars a year until they finally closed the loophole. I had people calling me saying, hey, I want to bring my parents over from India, and that $1,400 a month they were going to get as a couple would have been just enough to make the condo payments. You know, it, but they, when they say there's nothing left to cut, we're the last state in the union to have this this program, but yet we won't get rid of it. All right, let's let's, let's talk some good fights. We've got election time coming up. This is always fun. And um, during the redistricting, several Republicans and I think a couple of Democrats yeah. were district in, into the same district, pitting Republican against pu Republican in gladiatorial beauty, lions, whips, samurai swords. And then a couple of guys said, oh, no, I'll step out, which was, just took the fun out of all of it. Keith King down mm -hmm. in the spring said, you know, I'm not going to fight my good my good friend down there, uh, Bill Cadman. Um, uh, you had John Becker up uh, up in uh, up in the, the fields, Northeast, yep. yeah, and he said, you know what? I'll, I'll let Jerry Sonnenberg have this for a while. these 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 are gentlemen. That was an amazing thing to do. I was looking forward to the bloody bath, but not to disappoint down in Colorado Springs. We got that. We got uh, yes, we sure do. Um, House Majority Leader Amy Stevens and um, Marsha Looper from uh, a little town east of the Springs, and this was kind of a. A last minute, uh, the last map that was drawn um, could have been drawn any number of different ways, but uh, if you'll remember, the Republicans appealed these these maps and said they're not good enough, and the Democrats said, fine, how do you like, like this? this one? And, <laughs> and John, it hasn't disappointed. It's been, um, it's been kind of low intensity warfare on the House floor all year. Um, it's been them taking because kind you have the minority, the, excuse me, the majority other. leader, Amy Stevens, yes. who brought in a health care exchange last year, which angered a lot of Tea Party folks. And then you've got Marsha Looper, who was for, against that. So how, how have they been working together? They're, with one vote majority in the, the House of Representatives here, mm -hmm. when you've got two, two people going at it, that causes problems. Do you, yeah, does, does it spill over to the floor? Um, uh, occasionally, you'll, what, you're, what you'll kind of see is, is each of them sponsoring um, legislation to sort of, you know, outseg each other, as it were. Kind of, um, I'm more conservative. Um, I'm no, I'm more conservative. Um, you know, I think uh, Stevens had some sort of gun bill uh, up a while back. And do you remember what it did? Oh, it was. It said, in a state of emergency, the government right. can't take right. your guns, or the governor can't confiscate your guns. So you're safe. Um, which. You know that that happened just last Saturday, right? So it's hey, we just try to take my problem guy. solving. <laughs> Actually, you look at you look at uh, New Orleans, and it, it it does happen. But but he's, she's playing to the base, and that's, well, that's sure. okay. Yeah. So sure. we, and I mean, if there's ever a hurricane, then maybe we could address that. When it allowed it, when us it to you anti-gunnies. <laughs> it allowed us to sing our rendition. Come on out back. We'll shoot a f <laughs> couple pop cans. You'll change. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> I'd be all for it. You, I just wouldn't want to bet on. So what? You know, they just had the, the county assembly down there. And that was a that was almost a split between uh, Marsha Looper and Amy Stevens, and Looper came out just barely ahead. Is that right? So she'll have first line on the ballot this fall. Mm -hmm. um, the and the interesting dynamic there is Amy Stevens is, by just any objective standard, very conservative person. She was a former focus on the family executive, um, a, a socially conservative person. Um, but she sponsored this health exchange bill. It's an, an idea to create health care exchanges where anybody can go and buy insurance. It's actually a pretty conservative idea that uh, happened but, but to be included in Obamacare. Right. So everybody says it's Amy Care, which equals Obamacare. And they've coalesced around Marsha Looper, who by a lot of different measures is maybe not, doesn't fit all the conservative boxes that Amy Stevens well, does, it, but she's running to the right my, of Stevens. In my party, I've got to say, there, there's always been this tension between social conservatives and fiscal conservatives, mm -hmm. and we don't fit into that one box very easily. Any predictions on who's going to slug it out in the August primary on this? Boy, I don't I know. Do we you have know, some betting, betting I'm, men? I'm told that um, that more of the new d district was um, Marsha's uh, territory. Um, and that Marsha's always had a primary opponent, and so she's battle-hardened. She's accustomed to ha always having to fight. So maybe you could lay odds on her that way, but, but I don't know. Um, Stevens got in a, a ton of money 
from all these business groups that pushed for that health care exchange heavily. And I mean, we're talking like Casey. Um, Commerce and Industry Association. Right, uh, big, big business. The heavyweight business organizations mm -hmm. who remember who their friends are and who are called upon to remember who, who helped them. And, uh, you know, and so this will this is the one that everyone is watching it's going to it's going to be interesting all right there's still a little sizzle left in this i mean uh, in this in this session in mm -hmm. that the same thing keeps coming back civil unions yep. last time it went to you know, you know what what was frank mcnulty thinking he sent it to the right committee you know he still mm -hmm. he sent it to the right committee and it didn't pass it now i i don't think he's a big fan of this some no. say he did it so that he could kill it, but he sent it to the right oh, place. Sure, he? he did. I mean, the fact is, Republicans are in control of the House of Representatives, and civil unions for gay and lesbians. That's, I mean, I'm I'm guessing that when I go to the state assembly this weekend, I'm not going to see a whole bunch of people, a whole bunch of the Republican base saying we need civil unions. You know what I mean? It's it's a Democratic idea right now. It's. It's, um, there are a lot of Republicans who support it, but not a lot of elected Republicans. So, I mean, the Republicans are... That's because they have to face, especially if they're facing a primary, yeah, that's something that they, they exactly. don't want to touch. But it's going to go to the same committee, which was Judiciary, probably, right? Um, probably will go to the Judiciary Committee. That's and that, what and it lost told us. basically on a party line vote yeah. there. What's going to happen this year? Same um, players... Yeah. All I it mean, takes is one, because... Right. But isn't Mitchell on Judiciary? Well, it's kind of... Is he on Judiciary? I don't think he is. I could be wrong. It's kind of like, um, you know, you, you get a good running start and run headfirst into a brick wall, and, and it hurts, and you think, maybe I weakened that wall. I'm going to try it again, <laughs> you know? Um, and maybe they weakened the wall. I don't know. What's well, your paper put out a list of all the characters that have something to say about this, including the speaker and the majority leader and then all the committee members showing who's who's hard no, who's hard yes on gay marriage or with civil unions, and then a few question marks on a, on a couple of Republicans. And I would imagine their voicemail is con now constantly full. Mm -hmm. Could it change? Uh, sure. I mean, what I have seen um, more than anything is a, a huge shift in the public on this, mm -hmm. and a lot of sh uh, Republicans who shifted. I mean, for example, I think Sean Mitchell has indicated he's changed on the issue. Mm. I don't know if he's explicitly said that he would vote for it. But I mean that's kind of a huge thing. I mean it's a he's huge shift. pretty pretty classically conservative guy. You've got Republicans who probably always supported it and are much more just are just now sort of willing to quote come out of the closet and go ahead and vote for it. Um, you know, I think has Spence Spence um, all three Republican women in the Senate. Yeah. Voted so Spence for it last White year. and um, or, uh, Roberts. Roberts. Uh, so, you know, um, I mean, so the, the only hurdle is one House committee, because if it goes there, yeah. there'll be enough to get, get it passed out of the House and certainly pass the Senate. If you get it onto the House the floor, the it'll pass. Yeah. Uh, it'll pass the floor. There are right. enough Republicans on the floor. The hurdle is that committee, and um, and there are a couple of a uh, couple of people on that committee. I, you know, they they spend much of their time in the Capitol. I think Jerry Sonnenberg and um, I, I'm thinking. Um, Last year, I believe it was uh, Brian Del Grosso, but I'm not certain on that. And I just said that yeah, on TV, it, though, right? Yeah, so now so, the poor guys are going to get yeah. their phones filled. So, Sorry, but, Representative but Del over, Grosso. Over time, though, is this thing going to happen? I mean, I can't. Absolutely. I can't. It seems like it gets closer every year, right? Every John, year it gets the, a little closer. The politics are changing on this so fast. It was just yeah. 2006 when Colorado voters rejected this at the ballot box. Substantially. I mean, it was like well, 60, it was, 40, wasn't it? Uh, that, was gay, that, was mar that was marriage. Civil unions, was right. it was pretty right. close. Um, I've seen polling now that says you do this and it would be, it would be a slam dunk. I, I think people are a lot box. more of accepting of it. I think a lot of people, they've softened their position and they've actually kind of become sympathetic because they, they see what they perceive as a real kind of mean factor to what it. Well, just that it seems like so many of the p opponents are are ill-tempered and mean, you know? And it just, I think part of it is that, um, you know, a lot of folks are like, look, it's not that important to me. It sure seems important to gay folks. And some of the people who keep um, saying bad things about it just come off as kind of mean. But if, if, if public opinion is swinging so much, why not just put it back on the ballot? 
Yeah, well, well that it's seems cheaper to, be, to go through the legislature, yeah. isn't Not it? Not if you're Tim Gill. You can do that again. <laughs> mm -hmm. I, I don't have access to his checkbook, but I think they sense that it's uh, that that the legislature's getting close. And I also there may be kind of a underlying philosophical thing there where they want the legislature to actually, you know, bless this wedding, if you will. You know, I think I think Pat Stryker and Tim Gill and company want to keep it this way so they can bash those people who vote against it. And I think that's 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 not that's, that's, that's not that's, out of the realm, that's, right? Mm -hmm. And that's that's a pretty inexpensive expensive thing to do if you're Pat Stryker, you know, spending the million dollars putting it on the ballot, you know, go for it. That's Pat Stryker's got what, 1.5, 1.6 billion dollars. She earned it the old-fashioned sure. way. She inherited it. What's well, a million bucks to put it on the on the ballot and get it done? The question then is for Republicans, which is what is the smart thing for them to do? Is mm -hmm. the smart thing for them to do is, is to keep posing it and to um, to play to a Christian conservative base? that helps them, does this help them with them? Or is the smarter thing to do to go ahead and let it slip through and have it be a non-issue? What's the, what is the calculus there? And the calculus probably would have been, if they did it last year, it would be a non-issue by this year. Right. And nobody would care come the fall, yep. Republicans or Democrats. But I, I think they but missed, I just I think think they that, missed that they, they weren't at that, the, the tide was still turning in public sentiment, mm -hmm. and I think it's almost overwhelming now. It just seems like the public really doesn't care. <laughs> we don't know? care. We don't care. Right. All right, talk to me a little bit about uh, illegal aliens and tuition, because something something interesting happened this week. What was yes, that? Uh, the this uh, there there's a bill that people think of as the Dream Act, but really it's not. This is a Colorado mini Colorado version of it. It would. If you don't have your, if you cross the border illegally with your parents, and you graduate from a Colorado high school after spending at least three years there, then you can go to a Colorado college or university for in-state tuition. You just don't get the the eighteen hundred dollars stipend that the state gives everybody. Um, so it's a, we're talking about a discount of, you know, probably ten thousand dollars on tuition. And, and right it makes now, what is affordable? Law? So right now these kids, um, if they do get into a university, they have to pay out-of-state tuition, which is just prohibitively expensive. Two to expensive. four times as much, basically. Yeah. Right. Um, so what, happened this, what so happened this this week? This bill has been sitting on the calendar all year long, and every Monday it's been on the calendar, and we go and say, we doing it today, and they'll lay it over to the next Monday. Well, this last Monday, they finally did it, and we were all there with our pens and pads and laptops ready for one of the big fights of the year. It got and out of it committee. Was just, it oh, got yeah, out of it, committee. It, it had been voted on once on a voice vote on the Senate floor and it was just waiting for a recorded you, vote. Right. Final vote and and then crickets. It just passed right through. No debate. This Party was in, no debate. Senate? In, the Senate. in the Senate? In the Senate. So no this, this red hot issue for years has been, been sitting there and it just tensions it. This was a, yeah. a, a what, what, ready for that fight that she likes so much, what, John. Wh where's the fighting? Where, where, where's the hatred in government anymore? This is really hacking me off. Well, where's the violence? Th that was the question: is what? Where is the fight? And because in prior years, when this had come through, um, you know, Republicans had opened everything they had on it, and it, they just lay down and let let a third reading vote occur, um, and just let let it sail on through to the House. So the Republicans the is, still voted against it. Oh yeah. They voted against it, but they didn't debate it. They didn't bring out their uh, you know, barrage of statistics and arguments and stuff. And what they said basically was, well, we, we just kind of wanted to respect the third reading process and let it. But just didn't, was just like, wait, what? I mean, you never have before, and on other bills you certainly fight. And a lot of it is, the thinking is, hey, look, um, this could be the year where Republicans um, retake the Senate and, and in fact one uh, Republican senator said you know we need to stop doing stuff that pisses off gay people Hispanic people and women well then what's the fun of being a Republican <laughs> you still have guns and liquor what? Uh, guns and liquor that's good um, but so but so this was all about the election this fall well, that you, I, you, no one can say that f for sure opine for me I'll look I'll just tell you that it, it struck us as extraordinarily odd that there uh, suddenly there's this wall of silence on an issue that has sent blood pressures through the Capitol Dome before um, and now they say nothing and it happens to be in a year where everybody's been told the Hispanic vote is crucial and I mean, 
do the math yourself. So is this somewhat of a compromise bill saying, all right, illegals, you go to call, you go to high school here, and the law is you, everybody who's here, whether you're illegal or not, gets a uh, K through 12 education. But afterwards, mm -hmm. we'll give you in-state tuition, but we're not going to give you this little scholarship that we give everybody else, which you're is right. about what? How much a year? About Eight, a couple thousand bucks yeah. for yeah, a full-time student. Eighteen hundred bucks. All right. Yeah. So instead of paying, what is out-of-state tuition? That uh, two to four times. To you, I think it's several million dollars. Yeah, it is several year. million yeah. dollars. <laughs> but, but. So now for half to a fourth of the cost of what it cost you last year, you can go to that school, but you're not going to get the stipend. Yeah, basically right. it's more than in-state tuition, but way less than out-of-state tuition. That's the, that's the difference from prior years when it was just basically we won in-state tuition. And so it's meant to say, see, they're not getting um, the same as, they're in a special category. Um, so they're not getting everything, they're just getting most everything. There's, but the other part of this story that's incredible is the fact that this bill just today was assigned uh, in the House to the House Education Committee. It's really important. The guy who heads the House Education Committee is um, Tom Massey, a Republican from Poncha Springs. He's the most moderate Republican in the House, probably. Does it, does it pass the, the committee? Yes. Pro it will yes. pass the committee, but then it will go to another committee called Appropriations, where it may die. But if for some reason it were to make it to the floor with a 33-32 majority, Massey could suddenly be that swing vote and send and this thing passed. into law. Incredible. Hey, Tim, thank yep. you. I feel sorry for you, but only about a month left and you'll be free. Thank you, sir. Thanks Always so good having. And thank you. I tell you what, tell a friend about the Independence Institute. Look for us at independenceinstitute.org. Listen for me late on Sunday afternoons on KHOW, and we'll see you soon.